Good morning, my friends. I'm so glad you could be with me today for more time in God's Word together in the Unfolding the Word series. We're in the midst of our study of the book of Daniel. We're in the fourth chapter now, a chapter given over to discussing a dream that God had sent to Nebuchadnezzar. I'm going to pick up our reading today in verse 19 of chapter 4 of Daniel. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was dismayed for a while, and his thoughts alarmed him. And the king answered and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation alarm you. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, may the dream be for those who hate you, and its interpretation for your enemies. The tree you saw, which grew and became strong so that its top reached to the heaven and was visible to the end of the whole earth, whose leaves were beautiful and its fruit abundant, and in which was food for all, under which beasts of the field found shade, and in whose branches the birds of the heavens lived. It is you, O king, who have grown and become strong. Your greatness has grown and reaches to the heaven, and your dominion to the ends of the earth. As I say, the context of the fourth chapter now is a dream that God had sent to King Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar is relating now this dream in chapter 4, but he's relating it from the other side of a whole series of events that the dream was predicting. A series of events that would occur over about an eight-year period. Uh, how much after those events this, this chapter was written is not clear, but the king is relating it. He's giving a retrospective on this period of time. But the period of time was, was marked at its beginning with a dream that God sent to the king. It was a dream, as you remember, about a huge tree. The chapter 2 dream, you remember, was about a huge statue. Uh, but in this case, the dream is about a huge tree. And I talked to you about why that tree was significant, because it represented Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. He had chosen the cedar of Lebanon as a sign or a symbol of his, of his kingdom. The dream was a dream of warning, as we've already seen. The warning was this, that the tree was to be cut down. Now, that tree that was cut down wasn't destroyed exactly because the stump was left in the ground, the roots were there, but it was all cut down. It's as if it is not there. And for a period of time, it would be controlled and then eventually would return. We saw also that, that the, the tree, now the stump, would be living like an animal for seven years. <clears throat> We've also discovered the purpose of the dream. In verse 17 that we looked at yesterday, to this end. In other words, God is permitting all of this to happen, causing it to happen, really, and he's doing it for this end, number one, to prove that he is actually the Most High God. All kinds of false gods have been proposed by humanity ever since the beginning of time. God is demonstrating to Nebuchadnezzar and to everyone, I am the true God. And I, as the true God, am the Lord of history. History will unfold according to my plan. And my power ensures that. In a way, it was the very same fundamental purpose behind the image that was sent in chapter 2, the, the uh, dream of the image and statue that, Dan, that the king had seen. Now, the king, after relating these details to, uh, to Daniel, and he wasn't trying to keep the details secret. He had related it earlier to the Magi order, and they couldn't interpret it. But now he relates it again. He's not sure what this dream means, but it really unsettles him. He senses that the meaning is not good and very personal. Well, that's our backdrop. In the verses that I read today, starting in verse 19, at first glance, they're a bit puzzling. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, Daniel doesn't begin to interpret the details of the dream 
right away. He is holding off. He is, uh, as it puts it in verse 19, dismayed and alarmed. Now, what would be causing him to be dismayed and alarmed? Well, let me tell you what's not causing it. <laughs> it's not that he doesn't know what the dream means. God's already given him that understanding. No, it's not because he's trying to buy time so that he can figure out what the dream was about. No, no, God had given him the insight. So what is it that's causing him to hesitate, to be concerned? Well, one possibility, I don't think it's the best one, but one possibility is that he knows the message of the dream is not a good message for the king. <laughs> and he would be a bearer of bad tidings to the king. And in that era, if you're the bearer of bad tidings to an absolute monarch, that's not a safe place to be, because frequently the messenger is killed who brings a message the king doesn't like. So perhaps that was in the picture. But the more we learn about Daniel throughout the book of Daniel, I don't think that was really the issue here. I don't think that was what was troubling him. I think what was troubling him is that he has delayed in responding because God has given him a, gen, a, a true affection, a genuine affection for Nebuchadnezzar. He cares about the king. Now think about that. That's a miracle. This king was responsible for tremendous bloodshed in his homeland, ripping him away from his family, taking him and, and putting him in the situation in Babylon. Uh, this king was responsible for tragedy and crisis for him. And yet, God gave him affection and care for the king. He doesn't want the warning to fall on the king. You notice how he said, may it fall on your enemies. <laughs> I don't want this. If he was harboring bitterness in his life, Daniel would have said, at last, good for you, Nebuchadnezzar. God's going to discipline you. You're going to be confronted for your for your uppity ways and for the tragedy you should cause God's people. But you don't see that in Daniel. Daniel, a man after God's heart, allowed God to give him affection for someone that from a worldly standpoint he would never feel affection for. There's hope in that for every one of us, brothers and sisters. God can give us affection for the unlovable. He can give us affection for those who've hurt us. Well, anyway, that's what we see going on in Daniel. <laughs> now, the king recognizes it in Daniel. He senses his reluctance. I think, at a very fundamental level, he knew that Daniel cared about him. Couldn't understand it, possibly, but he knew. And now he wants the interpretation, no matter how much it hurts. And so he says, don't, don't hesitate. Uh, I'm sure the tone of his voice is has changed <laughs> much warmer. Don't hesitate, Daniel. Don't hesitate, Daniel. Go ahead, share it with me. I need to know the answer. And so Daniel explains it. And he says, King, verse 22, you are the tree in the dream. It is just as you feared. It is just as you intuitively sensed was the case. This is a dream, another dream, King. This is a dream that God sent you. This is a dream that is focused on your future, your more immediate future. The dream in the image of chapter 2 indirectly affected Nebuchadnezzar's future, but it was about the future of humanity and the unfolding of the Gentile kingdoms leading to the return of the Messiah and the implementation of God's kingdom throughout the world. But uh, now, this has to do with you, Nebuchadnezzar. It's going to impact on your people, but it has to do with you. And really what Daniel is saying as well in the words that he uses, he says, I wish it wasn't so. I, I wish this wasn't the case. I wish it was about someone else. Now, later on, after Daniel gives some more interpretation to the, of the stream to the king, and we'll look at that tomorrow, in verse 27, we read these words, Therefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by practicing righteousness, 
in your iniquities by showing mercy to the oppressed that there may perhaps be a lengthening of your prosperity. In other words, King, God sent you this. It's not too late to repent. Repent while there's time. Acknowledge, remember the purpose of the dream? To say that there really is a most high God. All other gods are false. That God is in charge of history. Nebuchadnezzar, in your pride, you've been ignoring those truths. Repent of that. Get right with God while there's time before it's too late. As we'll see, Nebuchadnezzar didn't listen. Join me tomorrow as we see the rest of the interpretation of the dream.